All right, hello there. Um, quick disclaimer in this video, it's <laughs> this is not an actually good video. Uh, this is just me being like, ooh, I haven't updated or uploaded in a while. Uh, so here we are, but yeah, um, there's probably not really gonna be editing in this. Um, it's probably not gonna be actually good. And I do have a bit of a cough at the minute, so if I, die at some point during this, then, you know, that's, <laughs> that's why, oh, all right, ah, uh, my throat exists, so, yeah, but, um, I wanted to make just, like, a quick video that was just, um, talking about this, this part that I'd, um, been looking at for, I don't know, a little while at some point, um, I haven't been looking at it recently, but I just thought it was interesting, um, and I thought I might as well make one of these kind of videos because it's like I could um, actually do some like editing and whatnot. But um, the fact of the matter is that this video is going to be like so nerdy that I think like <laughs> like only the people who are like actually interested in like what's going on here are going to stick around anyway. And so the editing kind of feels like, eh, I could do it or I could just leave it. So I'm leaving it because I just <laughs> not in the space for that right now. But anyhow, um, so a while back I was sent, um, Soleil May. He's a guy who does Redstone Who Exists. You probably all know of who he is, but if not, I don't know, I'll put his channel in the description or something. But point is, he sent me, um, this a while back. And this is a two-tick looping CSA connected to a CCA. Um, the CSA is created by, uh, Fearless, and the CCA is Soleil himself. Uh, but the interesting about this uh, lime circuit right here is that, from my understanding at least, is that it's actually, like, the only one, like, it's the only, like, two-tick looping CSA that, like, exists, which I think is kind of interesting, but, um, but I was kind of looking at this a back, while back, and I'm like, I think you can actually, like, remove some parts from here. Um, let me try to explain that why quickly. So, just ignoring the pink, we'll get to that later. Um, just talking about this lime section right here. I was kind of looking at it and I realized that there was actually some redundancy in it. Um, and to explain this, I'm going to do a quick demo. Uh, so essentially, if you're adding a bit in or something, then you're going to be activating the contraption, something like that, right? Uh, depending on what bit you want to add in, it's, you know, you got the, the vertical architecture, you know, that's how it works. Uh, point is, is that when you do this, it means that it cancels out these signals, and so the signals here and here become reliant on these two comparators, um, each of which have a signal strength that is one lower of the input comparator. So essentially, when you deactivate these, instead of turning all off, essentially the signal strength here is decreased by one. Um, and then on both sides, they head through these similar paths where you see you have an inner and then an outer path. Um, the difference here being is that the inner path can fluctuate, so this can be both higher and lower than the outer path, and the outer path is pretty stable. Um, it's just dependent upon the input strength over here. Um, and so for now, we're just going to be looking at the outer path, because um, assuming that the inner path here is lower, then the signal strength just becomes dependent on the outer path. So normally, if we were to get rid of this right now, um, at the lowest signal strength this can possibly be, uh, this signal up here is going to become 2, right? Um, what's important about this is that right here, and you'll notice we have one here, and we have one right here. We have signal strength, I'm going to call them like stabilizers, but essentially what these do is that these mean that the signal here cannot drop below whatever the strength in here is. Technically this one can be cancelled out by that, but the point is is that this is supposed to, in some sense, um, and this is conditional but doesn't really matter, um, but stop it from dropping below 2. But since the signal already can't drop below 2, this is actually not necessary anymore. Um, and so you can actually remove this, and it's a similar situation on this side. You'll see if I remove that, then this signal strength becomes 6, and it's being inputted as 6 over here as well, even though this is the lowest signal strength that can get there. Um, and so you can actually remove both of these if you want. Um, and on top of that, okay, hold on, I'll have to go show you the future models first. 
Um, but essentially, you can remove those, and then I made one other small edit for between this and the final version. Um, but it might be worth visiting the kind of intermediate version first. So there's kind of two versions I made after this one. Um, I'm not sure. There's so many different versions here. I'm not sure which one of these actually works or not. <laughs> but I'll try to see. I think that one oh, looks kind of incomplete. No, that's the newer one. Uh, I have too many of these. Oh, this looks like... Okay, this was definitely one of the working versions, I think, just at a glance. But essentially, what I was able to do is I removed that one on this side, and then... Um... Oh, no, that's not one of the working versions. Where? 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 No. This one. Yeah, I think it's this one. Um, so essentially, the idea here is that I removed that one stabilizer on this side, and then instead of removing the stabilizer on this side, I actually removed the outer path on this side. Um, and this works kind of. Um, the issue is that, and the reason why I didn't figure this out sooner is because this works um, if you just look at the green circuit or the lime circuit itself, then this works. But the problem is that there's actually an edge case where. Um, if you remove the the outer path instead of the stabilizer, you'll see that it causes a certain edge case that can change this output right here, um, which is a bit of a problem. And so it's like it works in relation to itself as far as I can tell, but it's just that when I was initially building this version, um, essentially I had all of this cut off, and so I didn't realize that until afterwards. So point is, is that after that, uh, I went and I made this version and this version. Um, and the whole point of this version is essentially, one, I removed the stabilizer and I placed the outer path. And then the second big revision is that um, I changed how these work slightly. So you'll notice if I go back to the original version, that these two outputs are actually like pretty similar. So you have 10 here and you have seven here. And so there's something in redstone, it's called, actually, I don't know what the technical name for it is, but I just call it like signal strength bleeding. But the idea is, is that if you have a bunch of redstone in a line, if you, the redstone that's powered, it's like the signal strength will gradually get weaker as it goes farther and farther along. And so I was thinking right now, if I connected these two, then it would go 10, 9, 8, and so this would be 1 too high. But I was thinking if I can either decrease this value by 1 or increase this value by 1, then that means that I could actually just connect these two. And so instead of having these two here, I could just have um, one comparator. And so what I was able to do over here is essentially um, I put a block here. So instead of having, normally what this would do is that if you had the signal strength go all the way through, that essentially you would have seven, six, five, and then five would go into this comparator. But if you place a block here, then it's actually one higher. And so since the signal strength going into the back of this comparator is one higher, that means you only have to power in this one less. And so essentially we can change the 10 that was going into the back into a nine. Um, and so essentially it would go nine, eight, seven. Um, now, of course, this version looks a little bit different because I figured out that, um, oh, I don't know if that stopped recording. Okay, that was a thing. Uh, technical difficulties, I don't know. Um, make a cut there, <laughs> if this is still working. That just kind of jump attacked me. Um, but point is, is that um, what I can, oop, voice crack, what I can do here is that um, I figured out that I could actually decrease the value of all of these signal strengths slightly because um, it just was was a bit higher than it needed to be as far as I could tell so I did that um, I think it was kind of reliant on part some of the removed parts but since I those weren't ultimately necessary then I just kind of bopped it um, but anyhow moving on from there the one last kind of major thing that you'll notice is that there was also a stabilizer on this strength or on this signal kind of thing right here. Um, here, I'll go back to this version to explain that better. 
but you'll see that there's also this, no, this signal strength of two that's stabilizing this kind of um, inner lattice. And the interesting thing about this is that you'll notice that this, if the signal strength here is two, it's only going to affect three components. Um, so you have component number one, component number two, and component number three. Um, and the interesting thing about this is that, well, if we take a look at this, number one, this component obviously isn't necessary, we removed it. So the only two components that it's important that it's altering is this one and this one. And the idea here is that you want to constantly keep this at a minus or a plus one normally. And so you'll see right here, um, the signal strength going into this comparator is 10 while this one is eight. But since this is being subtracted by one, it's only outputting a nine, since this one's taking priority since nine is bigger than eight. Um, and so essentially, this is just supposed to hold this at a minus one instead of a minus two. But since if we go over here, this I changed up the input of it so that this is normally just a minus one. What I can do is that I can actually shift this so that it's one farther away so that normally it's being zero's T being taken out of the side. So it's normally just plus one with the zero on the side instead of the one on the side. And then I can remove that two stabilizer. Um, so yeah. And as far as I can tell, this model seems to work fine. So yeah, good, good stuff, I guess. Um, let's see. What else is there to say? <laughs> uh, obviously, I think it still needs some uh, some testing, but I think uh, yeah, I think it'll work out okay in the end. Probably, we'll see. Should be fine. Probably. Anyhow. Um, so assuming I haven't like overlooked something obvious, that's that. Um, I guess now I can move on to the actual adder itself. So this is a, um, a CCA that I made. Um, it's custom. It's actually derived. A lot of my CCAs are derived from like the very first CCA that I made. Um, that one's actually on my or plot. If you, any of you are interested in that, I don't know why you would be, but it's there if you want to see it. Um, but this one, the main difference between this one and this one is, well, I mean, <laughs> obviously that one's made by me and this one's made by Sloy, but um, the main thing I would say is that this has a two tick carry loop and this has a three tick carry loop. And what that means is that um, when it comes to CCAs, they usually rely upon these, these uh, like a, a normal CCA, you'll see there's ones like Dawn CCA, which works slightly differently. But normally they work upon, they have these two lattices. Um, so you have the cancel lattice and the carry lattice, and that's why it's called the cancel carry adder. Um, and the interesting thing here is that these only are supposed to really work up to like eight bits. And so if you wanna go beyond eight bits, you have to have something that essentially will like propagate the uh, carry line from the lower lattice to the upper lattice. Um, and so the carry loop, as far as I understand it, is just the difference between the output time of the lower lattice and the upper lattice. So a two tick carry loop means that the upper lattice outputs two ticks later than the lower lattice. And a three tick carry loop means that the upper lattice outputs three ticks later than the lower lattice. So generally, um, the main important differences here is that one, the two tick one can be a bit faster just cause that's a smaller difference in time. Um, but the other notable difference is that um, usually it's hard to extend the two tick one beyond 16 bits just because of how it's how it functions. Um, and this might be a bit hard to demonstrate, but if I go through here, so normally, okay, let's imagine that you have, let me do a quick demo here. Some of you might already get this. You can just like skip past when I'm done doing all this nonsense. Um, but for those of you who don't, okay. So let's say you have, this is like your carry lattice or something. 
And so this is working for uh, 16 bits or 8 bits. What am I saying? I'm dumb. And so if it's powered on at the bottom, and that means that uh, the carry should be true, and assuming that there's no cancel signal, that means that the carry strength is going to come up to the top at 1. Now the problem here is, is that even if you kind of try to get the most out of this, the fact of the matter is that usually what you're going to have to do is take this signal strength and then boost it like that. Which means that if you look at the height of this, that means that the problem is, so normally if you wanted to make this work for another 8 bits, what you would want is another lattice that's on top like this, right? And so that way, if you power on this one, and if hold on, power on that, and then if this goes up another seven bits, then that'll be one on the top again. So essentially, it's this happening all over again. But the issue here is that you'll see is that this is powering the Y here is one too low. So you'll see, this is a block higher than this. Um, so this can be can be remedied a bit, and I'm not going to go into full detail because there's it's a bit more complicated than what I'm showing here. Um, but essentially, this can be remedied a bit if you power in this one higher. And so essentially, what you do is that instead of powering here, at the very bottom, the bottom one powers into here, and then the rest of them power into here like normal. But that means that your signal strength up here is actually 2. And so then you can raise, um, you can move this up, and then you could do like, I don't know, something like this, and then that. And that and now you'll see that these are on the same level but obviously um, even with this height you can't do you can't power into this one again since the Y doesn't match up because it matches up to this one and so after that essentially if you were to make like a really tall adder or something it's like eventually you're going to need to make essentially like the bottom couple could be 8-bit segments but then you would need a bunch of like 7-bit segments so if you if you took this to like the logical extreme, then there would be some issues. Um, but since uh, I mean architecture over eight bit isn't common, but since architecture over sixteen bit is like really pretty uncommon in Minecraft, um, unless it's being done in hexadecimal, this honestly isn't really much of an issue. Pardon me, and so. Um, and so overall, I think I just kind of lean towards this. Um, as well as the fact that you'll see in a lot of these kind of adders, they'll like add on this extra bit. I don't know, I don't really like this. Uh, I think this kind of just bugs me a bit because it's like uh, dimensions, man. Dimensions are important. Dimensions make your brain go burr. Um, but anyhow, on top of that also, it's just like this one, the one that I made is just uh, a bit smaller. In general, I don't know what the actual dimensions on this are. Hold on. If I measure from here and I go back here, okay, so that's about 12 long. Although I think the inputs on this are a bit messy. So I'm not sure how this is actually going to. I might. Maybe I should measure the whole assembly actually. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, God. <coughs> Oof. Rough. All right. <coughs> Yeah, so it's kind of funny because I think um, these two are hooked up a bit differently. So you'll notice right now the adder seems to be one block longer. Um, but if I take this, so the total length is 28. And then if I look at this one, yeah. So I guess it also depends on how you measure this. So I guess Yeah. So I think hold on. Thoughts happening in brain in places. I haven't looked at this in a while. So I think lengthwise this might be a little bit shorter. But I think the main kind of important gain is the fact that this is also just five blocks wide, the same as this. Or else you'll see um, 
this one, this main section here, since this, um, oh yeah, I changed where this was too. Um, and so since this is seven blocks wide, and then you also have this like, uh, or this, yeah, if you take into account like the, the total green circuit, cause you have the five and then the extra two, um, and the adder is like six blocks wide. And then you have this extra thing over here that's two. And so the actual, if you look at like the total width of this thing, if you wanted to have like a square area, it's like nine blocks wide, um, which just kind of isn't, isn't great. Uh, so overall, I think this is kind of the, the way to go. But yeah, I think I'm just kind of, kind of ranting now. I'm kind of, I don't know, man, I have a moment. But anyhow, I thought I'd just um, take a minute to share this and talk about this. Because uh, I don't know, I thought it was, I thought it was interesting. And um, if this is like, if my intel is correct and this is like the only one, then I guess this means that, um, assuming that I actually did this right, um, which I'm pretty confident on, but um, that this is currently like the, the fastest you can get. Um, Or the smallest. So, actually, I haven't even checked like the speed comparison between the two. So, we'll have to see that later. But, um, but I just thought it was interesting since, like, you know, I don't know, it was treated this like, oh, it's like one of a kind and whatnot. And I'm like, oh, so just fun to toy with. Also, I'm realizing I didn't mention this too, but um, also the stabilizers on the input since um, I already reduced this down to one comparator, that means I was also able to shave off one of these. So you'll notice there's one there, but if you look at the older model, then there is two, which correspond to the two different inputs. Just another little thing. But um, anyhow, I think that's like most of what I was gonna say right there. Um, yeah, apart from that, I think everything's pretty much the same. The only other big difference is, um, well, that's not really a big difference, but that the, um, so there's like a clear line here that's in the orange, and you'll notice that mine has torches in it, while this doesn't. Um, and the main reason for this is just some space saving, and you might be like, oh my gosh, but, but Riven, it's not five hertz anymore, but like, why would you want a five hertz counter to be constantly cleared at five hertz. Like, I don't think that's really reasonable. So overall, I think that should be, um, it's not, as far as I can tell for like any reasonable use of a 16 bit counter, it's not really a big deal. So there might be some, some odd cases, but overall it's like not really a, an issue as far as I can tell. So, but yeah, so that is, that is things. Um, I, I've i totally run out of words, so <laughs> gonna be ending that here, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you all um, enjoyed this, this rant. Um, I have been working a lot on a project recently, and I think, I'm gonna be honest with all you all, I'm like, I'm pretty burned out. Um, and I'm not entirely sure when I'm going to be able to finish. I was, I didn't think that I would, but I was hoping I could finish over the, the summer, but it's just, it's kind of hard, dude. Progress has been just kind of painful. Um, but anyhow, I think with, with school coming up soon, I think, um, what I'm probably going to do is that I'm probably going to make like a quick little kind of teaser video for it, um, uh, before I get back into school. Um, and then I'm going to take some time to just like, kind of like, you know, get into the school rhythm and then I'll probably put some, make sure I can get some work done on it. Um, and hopefully it gets finished at some point. I don't, <laughs> I honestly, I'm not entire. it's like, it's very close to done, but all the same, it's like, um, I honestly couldn't give you like an ETA, so I don't know. We'll just play it by ear. But um, anyhow, yeah. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, thanks, Sloy, for showing me this. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna. 
I don't know. I'm going to go do something. Probably. <laughs> All right, bye.